But in this test, we're going to determine the permeability of the soil, also known as hydraulic conductivity. And for that, we use some soil and the testing equipment. First thing we need to know is how much soil uh, we're using. Um, and we do that by weighing the empty cell first. And then with, with the soil in it, we will measure um, the difference. So that will tell us how much soil there is. When we do that, the soil will be totally dry. Um, so it's prior to adding the water content to it. If we know the weight of the soil, and we know the dimensions of the cell, this is a three inch diameter, and we're going to measure the height of the soil also. Okay? Uh, but prior to that, we need to assemble the material. Knowing the height and the diameter, we can figure out the volume, and if we know the weight and the volume, we'll figure out the density. Because the permeability of the soil is related to the density. The denser the material, the lower the permeability. So, in our test setup, uh, that's one property that we're measuring. The setup is a permeability cell, placing the soil in, adding a filter paper, and there is a filter stone that you can see. This is porous uh, stone that it goes right into the soil material so that our soil is going to be sandwiched in there, that the top surface here is clean, free of any sand, and that the O-ring is clean as well. So when you assemble it, that would be the seal that you're relying on. So, these wing nuts, there's three of them, because the material of this cell is like a plastic a plexiglass, you can actually see the length of the soil that you're testing, and you can measure it exactly uh, from porous stone to porous stone. In this case, we're talking about five inches of soil. The first type of test we're going to do is called a constant head, and the term head refers to the pressure and elevation uh, potential that is applied to the soil. And the constant head refers to the fact that through the test that potential is kept constant. Once I open the outlet uh, in here and the inlet, now we have a water circuit that is coming from the inlet here, coming down uh, it's very important to get rid of all the air in the system, so steady state we're causing flow to come into the sample from the bottom, flowing upwards, and now we're at a steady state kind of condition. So it's in equilibrium, and all is involved in measuring the hydraulic conductivity is two things. You have to measure the height difference between this outlet point and the top. So that would be the change in elevation from the top to the bottom uh, of this zero condition because that one is level at the end. So that's one number. And then the other number that we'll need to be measured is the flow rate or the rate of flow. How much water is coming out of the system per unit of time. So we need to look at a clock or a stopwatch and at the time when we say zero, okay, we start collecting. Uh, we collect the outlet for maybe one minute, two minutes, uh, your choice depending on the uh, amount of water that is coming through. And that in, in turn is dependent on the permeability of the material. So for a sand, it may not take very long. For something with a silt or clay, it will take a lot longer to get enough uh, flow through the system. So once the stop clock is uh, recorded, then we stop and then simply you measure how many cubic centimeters or milliliters have come through. An alternative way of doing this would be since you know that the unit weight of water is one gram per cubic centimeter, then what you could do is use a scale 
So with any container, you take your container, zero it, okay, and then collect the sample for a given unit of time. So looking at the stopwatch, collecting. Once you've collected enough sample, then you will measure the weight uh, that came through. So how many grams? And because one gram is equivalent to one cubic centimeter in the case of water at room temperature, the number of grams will be the number of, of cubic centimeters uh, that have flown through the sample. So that is the constant head hydraulic conductivity. You will notice as I shut off, the flow stops. Uh, with this panel, it also allows us to test under falling head conditions, and for that we're going to use the medium position. Uh, it's labeled with a B. So the corresponding valve here will allow us to feed water into the system as we open it. And we also, it's important here to get rid of all the air in this system. Uh, we can see the water level rising and eventually when we fill that up we're gonna close that and the test procedure requires a stopwatch because once we open flow uh, conditions the falling head test is going to allow us to record time there and time here. So we're going to measure the drop in between two specific times. As you notice, when we're reaching the level of zero difference head, the amount of water flow slows down until eventually they become level. But by recording two different falling head values corresponding to a particular time difference, time one and time two, you'll be able to complete the calculations of hydraulic conductivity under falling head test conditions.